<laughs> yeah. All oh, right. Um. Yes, but we are. Okay, let's just do the front pages, guys. <laughs> I want to say, we're looking for, we're looking for our world logic, logic or we're we looking for no, 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 no. You, but the yeah, most logical thing to do right but now before, is to read the front pages. Before we do that, though, um, if if you've seen a bell, a really massive bell anywhere in Accra, um, please let us know. Let the police know. A hundred and fifty year old church bell has been stolen from Ashiriasi at the Eburi oh. Presby Church of Ghana. You mean Ashwasi? Um, yes, and they are pleading with the public to be on the lookout for this bell. Apparently, it's a massive bell. It's very heavy. It's 150 years old. And we don't understand why it has been stolen and what those who have stolen it are planning to use it for. Did they say wow. what it's made of? Is it silver? Is it gold? It's No, I think it's steel. It's, it's like the regular... And oh, but apparently it's massive, old. and they don't yeah. even understand how somebody could carry it. But if, like, so if you like see a bell... See that. If you see a bell, um, please let the police oh, know. I, I wish I could see it, but I've yeah, yeah, it's stolen. Yeah, it a point so. of tourist attraction. Yes, I wonder if it's still in the shape of a bell now, looking at what steel can be used for today. I mean, pres- I'm presuming it's, it's scrap metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so fun pages. I'm going to start with the Daily Statesman. Elambella DCE poo-poo's accusation um, by NPP opponents. We've done better, but more needs to be done, says Baumia. And import duties down by 50%. I have the Daily Guide news paper you have no boots only chale what is that vice president um jabbing the ndc baumia dazzles import duties down 50 percent car duties down 30 percent that's on the front page of the daily guide newspaper but there are also two three other stories government saves 1.5 million deposited from financial crash mpp ndc meet on april 9th and un office for project service uh hundred thousand housing project is a game changer those are the stories the business finder leads with so far so good economic management team defends record also agri sector will collapse if and that's a question we have lastly import duty slashed by 50 percent and 30 percent for cars all right, on the front page of the Ghanaian Times, big boost for importers. And obviously, that town hall meeting um, yesterday is trending on all the front pages mm-hmm. of the newspaper. Also, assault on three Ghanaian Times journalists. So the policeman has been charged with seven counts, including forgery. I'll be bringing you more on that story a little later on. And government's economic management team holds meeting town hall meeting. Anyway, it's absolutely right. The EMT meeting is also on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Import duties go down today. Government reduced uses benchmark values vehicles 30 percent others 50 percent university of education reinstates three dismissed lecturers Winneba um ejumaku campuses reopen april 8th Dumsa is not back guess who is saying that energy minister john john peter amo i wanted to say jean pierre amo <laughs> illegal <laughs> miners return to business in western north those are the stories on the front page, back page of the Daily, Daily Graphic newspaper. Africa Development Bank to support Ghanaian women in agribusiness. A man, 24, in police grip for breaking into bank in Sunyani. On economic fundamentals, the Chronicle says our economic fundamentals are strong, says the Vice President Baumia. Also, Amawu apologizes over power outages. And lastly, $1.5 billion for road sector. And the last paper with the final headlines, government slashes import duty by 50%. Baumia jabs NDC shrugs of criticism of economy. And that story about the UEW lecturers also on the front page of the Crusading Guide. Gentlemen, let's begin with breaking down what really happened yesterday uh, between the hours of about 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. But we can't start without listening to this. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me reiterate that when it comes to GDP growth, we have performed better than we inherited. (laughs) Agricultural growth, we have performed better. Industrial growth, we have performed better. Inflation, we have performed better. Interest rates, we have performed better. Exchange rate depreciation, we have performed better. The fiscal balance, the fiscal deficit, we have performed better. The trade balance, we have performed better. Current account balance, we have performed better. Growth international reserves, we have performed better. Jobs, we have performed better. Teacher training allowances, nursing training allowances, passport application, driver's license, 
Renewal of NHIS? Registering a business? Cost of electricity? Yes, so, yeah, there's better performance. Better, yes, yes better performance all around. Um, ben, what, what are the details? Yes, so on the we have performed better note, he was apparently giving us a, a, a background to apparently what they inherited from the previous government and he started on the note of the deficit. So he says that in 2012 they inherited a deficit of 12.2% uh, of GDP. In 2013 it was 11.7% of GDP. In 2014 it was also 9 it was 11.9% of GDP, and in 2016, it came down to 9.3% of GDP. That was not all. He added that the, the debt stock, as of the time they came, was around $122 billion, which has also piled up. He said inflation was a double digit, that's 15.4% as of 2016. Then he also said that debt servicing became burdensome. Then he said external trade balance was also getting worse. Then he said the economy became vulnerable to external shock. And he said it was as a result of this that the country opted for an IMF bailout, which we know that just, uh, I think, two days ago, the country came out of it. Then he said this led to the government burdening the citizens with taxes. And this led ultimately to a cut in research allowance, a cut in nursing training allowance, and also it, it declined the growth in the agri sector and also uh, leading the debt the debt stock uh, the debt stock actually to 70% of gdp by 20%. Wow so uh, Daniel continuing on that comparison note one of the sticking points was the comparison between the depreciation of the cd between 2012 and 2016 compared to between 2017 and now his argument essentially was that last year the cd depreciated by 8.4%. He said that was actually better than had happened under the previous government and he cited the 31.3 percent depreciation in 2014 and said this was one of the worst performance ever in the history of the currency he says given that which happened his contention is that the, the worst performance of the cd under the 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 mp which was last year was actually better than the best performance um, of the currency under the previous government and he, he appropriated the statement made by former President John Mahama when he referred to marching the MPP boot for boot when it comes to the adoption of um, violence. And he said, well, when it comes to the management of the CD, the NDC cannot match the MPP boot for boot. After all, the NDC does not have boots. They have Chalewati and vintage Baumia and people uh, responded spontaneously and they were claps and GS and all of that. And he actually contrasted what they came to inherit, what they have been able to, done, uh, to, to do. So sorry. So actually they're saying that currently uh, as of 2017, we had growth in the economy of 8.1%. Uh, then also inflation as of January 2019 was 9%. Oil growth was 5.8% in 2018. Agri, agri growth was 6.9%. Uh, this is significant because the growth in agri have been declined, has been declining for some time now. Then he said tax revenue exceeded government expenditure. This is not too common as far as our, our politics is concerned. And then he said government has actually passed what they call a fiscal discipline law to guard against what is known as, uh, is it profligate expenditure? Uh, physical Responsibility Act. Profligate expenditure. And, and, yeah. and Daniel, again, sticking to one of the things that he said that got people excited. This statement he made in 2014 about when the fundamentals are weak, the, the, the currency will expose you. He repeated that statement. You have to remember that when the city was depreciating, that statement was replayed over and over again, both in mainstream media and on social media. That was intended to take shots at him. He stated yesterday that, look, that statement he made in 2014, that when the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate would, will expose you. That statement was true, and it is true now. It is 100% correct. Unquote. And he concluded by saying, if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. But if the exchange rate moves, you cannot jump into conclusion that the fundamentals are weak. That logic, that defies logic. And he stated the, 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 the rate of depreciation to back his argument. Again, 
one of the other things he said, and I think that this may be the highlight of the presentation yesterday, was the reduction in import duties, the value of import duties by 50% for all products except vehicles, which enjoyed, uh, which will enjoy 30% from today. Now, he said that the vehicles are enjoying 30% because already there are reductions in duties on imports of vehicles, which uh, vehicle imports are already enjoying. He said when you add those deductions to the 30%, you will arrive at the 50% that the other products are going to enjoy uh, on account of government decision. Again, he said only 10% of containers will go through physical examination. Um, you know that, again, this is one of the sticking points about the amount of time, the odious amount of time that people spend physically examining uh, uh, containers and delays and wasting time, forcing people sometimes to pay demorage because um, they are spending too much time at the port. That creates problems for them. So he said only 10% will now go through this. The 90% that will be examined, all examination agencies will do the examinations at the same time. This again, he, he says, is intended to reduce uh, the time that is spent doing these things. He believes that when all of this is done, it will encourage a lot more uh, containers from other countries to go through our ports that they can make money to cover up the cuts that uh, they have had to undertake. And lastly, to uh, sorry, and lastly on my part, uh, as far as Baumier's uh, town hall meeting uh, was concerned, uh, it was not just a question of numbers. He spoke to what he calls inclusive transformational agenda and this is where according to him the government is robbing in everybody the poor the the the, the, the vulnerable to be able to feel the impact of the microeconomic indications being translated in their in the, in, the, in their daily living so on that note he he, he expounded on on, on 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 it on three main fronts and he said build a uh, building human development capital also enhancing access to public service and the third one empowering local uh, communities and investing in local infrastructure but it was the building human capital which he really really gave much more uh, details to with this he talked about the government's educational policy that's the free shs and according to him enrollment has increased uh, to 36 percent just in 2018 and also 30 percent slots have been reserved for underprivileged schools just to bridge the gap between the haves and the have not he says that government uh, get fund is investing about 1.5 billion ghana cities in infrastructure and uh, he explained that to me that that's going to be for a period of three years then he says captation grant has also been doubled then he talked about the Na nation builders cop as being a, a, a medium that is providing jobs for uh, graduates so basically it was not just a question of numbers but the government is saying that most of these things that they are doing as far as the numbers are concerned they are doing specific things to make sure that the average person benefits malik i mean you are deputy head of the political desk did you get the impression when you were listening to dr baumia that he was spending a lot of time addressing the opposition well, I mean, given that um, they've had a difficult run with the currency, one is not surprised that he would, and, and, and jabs have been thrown at him. Remember that the minority recently, after um, held press conferences and said that they have to take responsibility for the, the power challenges, uh, the city is not doing well, and it's because, again, his own statement, the fundamentals are weak. One is not surprised that he would address the opposition head on. After all, it is the opposition uh, together with the media that would hold his government accountable. So when he's responding to the opposition in the manner that he did, one is not, one can't begrudge him. After all, this is mm. the game of politics. Mm. Maybe mm. I should just, uh, under 30 seconds. I, I, I was thinking that the power situation is real. Uh, the city situation is real, and so at the end of the day, if you if 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 if, if you are sp you you get this real opportunity to speak to Ghanaians, I mean you can get the political scoring at the end of within the room they will cheer you and all of that. But here we are sitting here, not NDC, not MPP, analyzing what he said. So assuming the statement was bereft of substance, then he's going to be exposed. But I'm happy to say that looking at the statement, you had a lot in yes, there. looking at the statement, I think that he was not afraid to touch on the issues that were core to the people. Okay. You will recall that I stated in 2014 that if the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rate will expose you. 
That was true then, that was true then, and it is true now. It is 100% correct. Of course, he went on after this to explain that the reverse is not exactly the same. Um, so, I mean, generally, any more regular Ghanaian, not NDC, not NDC, not NPP. And, and she has been expe you a spectator have, since. Yes. <laughs> I mean, ha have, your, have your concerns been addressed? Um, my expectations have been met, I would say, and my expectations were that um, I would walk away listening to this um, a little bit disappointed because, you know, I hold um, Dr. Baumia and the NPP to a certain high standard. I wish they would do what Barack Obama did when he came into government and say that, we're going to turn this around and um, do the things that will benefit the nation for the long term. Sometimes I feel like it's too much politics, it's too much winning election, it's too much of saying, oh, this is not doom, so it's light off because we don't want to be able to say that, you know, in our time we had doom. So another thing that really bothers me, and I understand that the economics of it means that we have to do these comparisons, um, you know, the city at this point, the city at that point. At the end of the day, for the average Ghanaian, like um, Ken Thompson said, what does the dollar mean in your pocket? What does the CD mean in your pocket? So three, four years ago, the CD may, the dollar to CD may have been one to three CDs or one to four CDs. Now it's one to five CDs. Economically, you're telling me that, oh, we're doing really good. But actually, um, I'm having to buy the dollar with more CDs. And when I have dollars, I have more money. I have a friend who was here from London a few weeks ago. He changes 10 pounds and it's 70 CDs. When I moved back to Ghana, I changed a pound and it was three CDs, 50 pounds. So I get the economics, but the truth of the matter is that when it comes to money, my pocket it's not um, economically coming together for me okay let me ask the rest of you listening to us if your expectations were met if this is what you wanted to hear um pesco back up not say put on facebook whilst for me the riverton pass was a q a session afterward where the ministers actually spoke to the specific uh, it's the specific sectors they speak and the amazing over. talent they displayed and in not actually answering some of the questions well, we'll come to that as well. But Pesco Bakwabnose said that, I mean, he said this on Facebook. Um, Mr. Mehu has been speaking for five minutes and my lights are still off. Uh, but he says it's not doom so, actually. Exactly. I mean, uh, somebody apparently asked a question from the audience about the state of the power situation. And the, the minister says that it's not a question of doom so. Actually, we have more capacity in terms of generating light. The problem we are having is that they're looking into the future. They want to get us to a point where we will never experience this particular doom so again and that's why he will plead with Ghanaians to bear with them in terms of trying to do repair works or trying to install a system that will put us on a level that we do not come to where we are. He also said that the Ministry of Finance has given them the, the, the necessary revenue to purchase the crude, uh, light crude, diesel and heavy fuel for their machines and so really it's much ado about nothing. Those are not his words exactly but really it's much ado about nothing that mm. we are actually in doom so. Uh, before I come to you anymore, it was also, it's also so interesting to hear Mr. Mehu say that first of all we will get a timetable shortly. He has been getting prior notice of which areas will be going off then he said that the ashanti region has a timetable yes oh He's, i see yes, yes we have the sound we'll play that during the show and um okay we'll go to the ashanti region today and find out if okay. they know ahead of time and then also um a little away from this but a gentle reminder to the ministry of finance about those water filters at the wager um Site mm. So that should well. be water resources and sanitation. But I guess well, oh, but I guess where does the money come from at the mm. end of the day? And um, because we know that if if those if those filters go off, we'll be in big trouble concerning Here in water. Accra. So All right, um, the policeman who has been charged. Anymore. Okay, so you remember this policeman and and the story about the assault on the three Ghanaian Times journalists. So this policeman ran a red light. He hit the car and then he was chased down. And then there was all of the assault. Anyway, he has been charged um, with seven counts of traffic offences. And um, these include careless and in considered riding, use of motorcycle without license, use of motorcycle without roadworthy certificate, and it goes on. The interesting part of this is, can you imagine that the motorcycle was not registered? So when he got to court and they asked for the registration, he brought a registration for the motorcycle, which actually wasn't the motorcycle's registration. And they investigated and found this out. Um, so I guess he was trying to pull a fast one on the court. And um, he's been fined. Well, he's been, um, bail has been set at 6,000 Ghana cities with a surety. And the surety is that um, they will pay 1,500 as deposit security. Um, and so that case continues as well. The Ghanaian Times has also been fined as well. And um, because they were also driving an uninsured vehicle and had also failed to change ownership. The assault aspect of this case um, has not been spoken about. 
about yet? Malik, um, reinstated UEW lectures. Yes, you know that we, 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 we've done this story um, repeatedly about the dismissal of these three lecturers which uh, spared the disagreements in that university and caused the eventual closure of the university. These three lecturers have now been reinstated um, and they are Professor Ephraim Avianso one time Upper West Regional Minister, Dr. Frimpom Kechiri uh, Duku and Dr. Emmanuel Ose Sapong. These three lectures have been reinstated. This is according to a statement signed by the council chairman. Remember that their dismissal was, the decision to dismiss them was taken by the, the, the university's governing council. Now the governing council has reinstated them and this according to the, the, the council chairman, Professor Emmanuel Nicolas Abaka, uh, who issued a statement yesterday. Mm. It's because the Regional Security Council met with them and they decided that they had to, in, in, in order to bring peace and harmony and quiet in the university and to be able to reopen the university on, on the 8th. That's Monday next week. So we have week. a date for the reopening of Monday, UBW. next week, Monday. yes. Great news, um, great news. So they had, to, they had to reinstate them, which is what UTAG had been advocating for. for the uh, Student uh, Representative uh, uh, Council had also been advocating for this. That's Interesting. Very, very good news coming in uh, from UEW. Any more? Take us to Agbo Bloshi Market. Um, yes. Yeah, so you remember a few weeks ago, we had the conversation on electronic waste and the recycling at the old Fadama scrapyard, which is at Bloshi. Well, good news. There's a 25 million euro program um, between the government of Ghana and Germany and what they're doing is that they're going to um, commission a health center, a football pitch, a training facility for the community and what they're doing actually is to teach um, the people in the area how to recycle the electronic waste properly. We're really, really happy about that because we know and um, we talked about it, we put the pictures out there. It's really, really bad. The emissions that come from trying to burn the computers and all those things. And so that's what ha that's what's happening at Adbul Bloshi and we'll keep our eyes on that one, definitely. So you're happy oh. about that? I am very, very what happy, happy about, about it. What we're happy about is illegal mining is back in, in, in some parts of the Western North. Yeah, um, the, the, the Lands and Natural Resources Minister was in that part of the country and then they realized that some of the companies that were cleared, the small-scale mining miners. companies that were mm -hmm. cleared by the Interministerial Committee on Illegal Mining and were required to obtain some permits from the Minerals Commission have failed to do so and yet they are operating. When the minister went there, according to the story, some of the people actually had to run into the bush because they are operating illegally in this area, um, Wasa, Amen, visit Wasa, Amen, Fi, yeah. in yeah, the Western North. I guess you really can't take your eyes off them for a second, can you? Oh. Yeah. No, I'm saying yeah, the illegal miners, you have any, to. I don't think any category <laughs> of criminals can be ignored. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not <laughs> no, no, for no, no, a no, no, second no. at all. Anyway, we also can't take our eyes off the clock. It's time for the news <laughs> review. The online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Be that person who makes payments anytime and anywhere without the need to carry cash or that person who lives light because you use a Zenith mobile app to pay bills, top up airtime, effect instance transfers, top up investments and so much more. Avoid delays and keep afloat with the simple things in life. Simply sign up for Zenith Bank's electronic banking solutions today and live light. Go light with Zenith Bank. It's faster and smarter. Zenith Bank in your best interest. Now make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with our fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle Go Ghana. Goyle, good energy. Goyle, Yenara Yedia. Um, MyJohnLine.com says, Guta welcomes imports duty reductions despite minority criticisms. Dr. Joseph Oping was on PM Express last night. The AGI is actually, is however, cautioning them. He says, don't get too excited about the benchmark value reduction. Uh, for no not to get rice meal and a SIPA project, and um, the BBC.com has the latest on Abdelaziz Bouteflika. He is asking Algerians for forgiveness. He says he was proud of his contributions, but he has realized he's failed in his duty. A lot of politicians are asking for forgiveness nowadays. Um, we're going to go for the BBC News at 7. But guys, this is one of the interesting points from yesterday's lecture for me. Yesterday's town hall meeting. So the roads minister said there's a roundabout in Takradi called PTC roundabout. That's going to be made... An interchange and he says that it's going to stretch to the Park Grants roundabout. 
I don't understand what he means. So let me ask my question. If I'm at Kanda, there's an interchange at Kanda, and I'm construction, constructing one there, can I stretch that interchange to Akwaje? Well, we're about to find out. And we are being asked by the engineer. <laughs> no, 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 seriously. So, no, it's more no. the logic. Yes. <laughs> so, so, yes, an interchange, one interchange can cross kilometers. But if I want to take an exit 20 minutes away from the, what the 20 meters away from the roundabout, okay, I want to take two, three steps and take an exit. Good. An interchange we'll normally will not. That, well, that's why we need the right information bill, isn't it? Because I've been looking for them since that's oh. since we saw that newspaper story a few days ago. It's not at Urban Roads. The, the designs are coming from National. Even though, yes, there were designs earlier, but apparently uh, there are going to be different designs. So I, I, I just, I'm curious to know how that interchange will stretch from PTC to um, Pargrounds roundabouts. Good morning, Mr. Mwakwata. We're going to take these messages. BBC News at 7 will follow. As an executive, every transaction needs to be swift and convenient. Kindly enter your PIN to authorize the transaction, sir. 